All right, video number 12, where we are going to build a wiring diagram. Uh, we have so far gone through 11 videos that have laid groundwork on how to build components and then how to go and save them as stencils, or what most people would commonly call libraries of shapes inside of our copy of Microsoft Visio. What we're now going to do is do what we would do with Visio on a day-to-day -day basis. Once you've got your shapes built as a library, and now you want to go and create a assignment or an illustration or something like that, what you would normally do is going to be the workflow that will show where you're going to open it up, you're going to grab components, take them onto a page, you're going to connect them together, and then you know, you've know you got this beautiful drawing that you're going to want to you know disseminate or to try and uh, print off or send out or whatever it is going to go and be. I don't really care at that point, but let's go through the actual drawing process using our pre-made shapes. So we'll launch up Visio here. Inside of my copy of Visio, I have got my five stencils that we have made in this video series so far open. We're going to use each one of them. We have got morettes that we have made. We have got uh, some wire fans that we have made, or one wire fan. We have got a contactor that we've made. We have got a receptacle, and we have got some screws that we have made. So what we're going to do is we're going to build two boxes. We're going to stick a receptacle inside of one box. We're going to go and stick a contactor inside of the other box, and then we're just going to wire between them really quickly. First thing, we're going to build a box though. We have not built any boxes yet for this uh, entire thing, but it makes sense that we would have some sort of an outline so the students understand that you're going from box to box. Take a rectangle, drag that thing down. Usually for my boxes, what I will do is I will turn off the fill. By turning off the fill, that now allows me to click anywhere inside and I don't accidentally drag that box. I can still grab the box and move it as long as I grab it by the edge. But otherwise, if you got a solid fill and you accidentally click it in and move your mouse, you end up moving you know, the box itself around. The other thing that I like to do with the boxes is I like to go and change them to a dashed line. So you can go to your dashes up top over here. Generally speaking, I like that one over there. And then usually just for the sake of making this thing look professional, I'll round off the corners. Now we've got a box that doesn't just look like a square that was drawn out there. There is one more other cool thing for making boxes, by the way. That's the offset tool. We'll quickly run an offset over here. But what an offset will do is it's going to give me a line on the outside and on the inside of that. So I click offset, I select my distance, I'm going to type in one, we're working in metrics, so it's going to be one millimeter, hit enter, and what it does is it gives me a line that is offset one millimeter to the outside, that one there, as well as another line that's offset one millimeter to the inside of my original line, which stays in place. And then you just take one of those lines, I don't care which one, delete it, and now at this point you have got a nested set of dotted lines that actually looks like the structure of a box wall. We'll group those two together, now we've got one box, and we'll go and copy, control C, and paste, Control V, a second box out onto our drawing, and I will just start drawing and some components. I suggest making a couple of boxes, make yourself an octagon, make yourself a uh, just a squared out box that you can you know stretch because you can make this into a three gang, four gang, single gang, whatever you want, but give yourself a couple of outlines that you can just use with these. All right, let's take in our contactor. So we're gonna go to our basic shape. If you lost your shapes, just go to the My Shapes. You'll be able to turn your shapes on. Once again, don't look for these ones inside of your copy of Visio. These are customs that I built for mine. So you'll just turn on the stencils you want, and then you're going to grab your contactor. You're going to roll that thing inside of there. Then we're going to go and grab our decor receptacle. We're going to go and roll that one inside of there. And if I take a look at this, I want to have a little bit more wiring room around it. Guess what? You know, uh, room is free on a page so I'm going to go and take both of these boxes I'm going to go and make them a little bit taller I'm going to make them both a little bit fatter and then I'm going to go and recenter my devices onto them so taking this thing a little bit back inside here come on there we are and we'll do the same for this one once again if you want it to center you can just click on the box as your master click on your shape and then just do an align center and an align middle and at that point you would have your contactor perfectly aligned inside of the box there all right, we'll move that one up over there. They're roughly aligned. If you needed to align these two boxes perfectly, the other option for that would be to go and use your proper alignment uh, tool. Group this as a group, these two components, align it, and then you can break it apart so you're back down to the components. Same with this one here. You could group it and align you know, the tops of both of these two setups. We're not going to do that, though. You've seen how to do those moves uh, enough. Instead, we're going to start bringing in a couple of wire ends. So we're going to go have a... <coughs> wire end that's going to come into here a fan we have got all of our wire ends labeled because that way if we print in black and white 
uh, or if we have anybody that's colorblind, they're still able to go and use that. We're going to have those coming in. We're going to have this one coming out over here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do a bunch of connectors. And we're going to do some other fun stuff as well. Okay. Uh, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to go and take this one over here. It's going to be our home run. I'm going to run a line out for now. And then I'm going to go and put an arrowhead onto it. So you have arrowheads over here. I commonly use arrowheads to go and designate, you know, home runs. I'm just going to kick that one there with a line on it. Don't worry about the weight. We're going to get to all of that later on. The other thing that I want to take a look at is that inside of this contactor here, we're going to be breaking. We're not going to do the control circuit, but we're going to go and break the hotline the way we're supposed to when we run this thing through. But our neutral should be unbroken. So we're going to go and put a moret on that. You are allowed to break you know, the neutral if you are running it at the same time as a uh, line to the same component. But just because we want to use, you know, these pretty morets that we've made, we're going to go and throw one of those in there. So I'm going to take that moret. Commonly, I keep my moret just outside of the box. They still understand what's inside of there. And now we're going to go and do our connector. So I'm going to grab this one here. I'm going to run that down to that moret. I'm going to take this one here. I'm going to run that down to the moret. So my whites are together. I'm going to go and take my black, my outgoing here, that's going to come out of there. I'm going to stick that to T1. I'm going to take my black, my incoming, and put that to line one that's going through there. We have got this really important thing called bonding. So I'm going to go and grab a bond screw, which we created in one of our earlier videos. I'm going to place that one somewhere up here. Now we can resize it, make it down something pretty like that. And then we can go and moret our bond as it goes through and under that one as well. So we'll grab just one more moret. Over here, we'll take that one down. If you start drawing and resizing components, morets, I usually actually take one of these existing, copy and paste it, and then lay it over to the other side. But we'll stick that one over there for now. We will run this up into there. We're going to go and run this to there. And then we're going to come off the other side of the bond screw to you know simulate the wrap. Or if you want it, you can even take that. We can move these and stick it around here so it looks like it's you know wrapped all the way around that one. Now we've got our bonds underneath. Okay, couple more connections here. We're going to rip one line across there that's going to connect cable end to cable end. And then we're going to go and connect these ones to their proper configuration. And right now we've got a lot of crisscross applesauce going on with these things where they're, you know, going back and forth from one side to the other. We're not concerned about that yet because first we want to go and pretty up our lines and then we'll worry about those. So I've gone back to my pointer tool. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill down onto my wire end. Remember how we set those as being three mil? I'm going to drill down until I got the actual conductor I want. Now, because I want to paint a whole pile of them as white, that means I'm going to go to my format tool. I'm going to go and double click it. Okay, that locks my format painter on. And so now I just go around the drawing, clicking on every single white conductor and apply that formatting. Okay, I'm going to turn this thing off now because if I click on another line, then I would accidentally change that one as well. We'll pick another color. We'll take the air. So I'm going to drill down on my connector till I get to that one. This one's always a little bit tricky. You might have to zoom in so you get to it because it's a smaller gauge wire. I've got that select. Now I'm going to once again, double click it. Now that I've got that double clicked, I'm going to go from here to here to here over there. And then we have got our bear over here as well. And we don't have this bear actually going to a box bond screw. We could insert a box bond screw. We know that properly. We should be doing that. But sometimes in drawings, you will just drop some of those off just because it's uh, you want to keep the lines as simple as possible and everybody just understands the wrap. Okay, we're going to turn this off again because if I don't turn this off and I click on something, like if I finish doing my bond and now I decide I want to go to that one and I click there, what actually happens is all of the lines for that entire shape get screwed up. They take on those properties. So I'm just going to hit undo there. And when you hit undo, it automatically turns it off because it knows that you didn't mean to do that. Now we're going to go back and grab this black conductor here, drill down till we can get to it. Come on. There we are. And then double click this to go and get my format painter locked on. We're going to roll around and hit all of these. Okay. So now we've got all of our lines together. The last one that I'm going to go and do, I'm going to turn this one off, is I'm going to go and do my cable itself. And the cable itself, I always do off of one of these whites, the bonds over here, but I'm just going to up the weighting of it. So I'm going to go and take one of these bonds, I'm going to copy the format just a one time click or double click if you got multiples. I'm going to hit it like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the weight. So if you go up to six point, which is the default inside of there, you get about that size. You can honestly make it better by going and opening up your side format shape. We'll go and 
down on this one here. And usually what I'll do is I will make these things a 10 point line, and then I'm gonna change the cap type. The cap type refers to the end of the cable. See how this cable end here is rounded like that? What I like to do is I'd like to change it to a flat. And what flat is, is it just loses the end. So it kind of looks more like a cable where that you have going from one component to another. And there we have it. Now it looks like we've got a chunk of Lumex, you know, that's going from one box to another. Uh, what we can do is we can apply that formatting that we have there up to this one over here, our home run. And then it did accidentally turn the arrowhead off on that. That's okay. We can just go and reapply that. Now we know that we've got our arrowhead there for our home run. Okay, last things, last things are going to be make the lines pretty. And there's going to be a couple things we're going to do in order to make the lines pretty. If I take a look at this, I see that no matter which direction I have this laid, my bond is going to have to cross over top of some connectors. These two are too close together uh, for, you know, their own good. They, it'd be easier if I had these things kind of looped around. So sometimes you'll just move one up just so you have a little bit of clarity over top of which ones are going where. These ones over here, the whites are pretty good there, except for where it's going over top of this. We want to go and get that to wrap around our device. And here we see these two are crossing over each other. So I'm going to grab one of these points on one of these lines, drag that thing up. Relatively straightforward, clear illustration that I have. This one down here, a little bit harder to go and see because we're going to have a lot of crisscross that's going to happen inside of here, right? We have to have that in order to go and get this to go and work out. We see that we've got all these lines that are flipping around back and forth. What we can actually do is we can grab this shape over here. Remember, these dynamic connectors are locked on and we can go and hit a rotate, flip horizontal. And when I do that, see what happens over there? It just flips this around. Now, all of a sudden, the black conductor comes all the way up and into there. My white conductor comes over to there. And if I do this, We've now got no wrapping of lines or crisscrossing of lines. Uh, we've just got straight cable entries. Looking up at this one over here, I'm going to do the same thing right over there if I want. Uh, that would move my bond over to this side. It won't make a huge difference on this one, but we could just do a rotate, flip horizontal. And if I do that, what we see is that we can take this bond, we can drop that down a little bit, and then we can take this one up a little bit and drop that one down a little bit. And then we see that we have got our white, so I identified our neutral, I accidentally grabbed that one, moved that one. I snapped it right off of its components there. Sometimes if you grab a complete line, you can move the line and it'll break off of its components. I just did that there. Um, was unintentional, wasn't what's supposed to be. I was just trying to straighten those lines out. So we've got those two that are lined up. Another cool thing that you can do if you're lining up lines, you take that and then you can when I'm moving this back and forth, I can actually grab my thing, slide up to here so I'm centered on there, and that's going to make those two lines now be perfectly even. Okay, very last thing that we're going to do with this entire drawing, I'm going to go Control A, which is going to be Select All. Alternatively, you could just go and take a larger box like that, and then you're going to go and group this thing as a single group, and then up top here is a button we haven't hit yet, but this centers it on your page, so it's going to find the outside bounding boxes, and it's just going to center your drawing dead center of the page vertical, dead center of the page horizontal, as far as where your components themselves are. That's it. We have now used what we had inside of here to go and draw a complete wiring circuit. We don't have the control circuit done for this. I get that, you know, it wouldn't be that hard for us to go and place that inside there, honestly, because you got a 120 volt contactor. You've got these beautiful options where you could now like run a line off for your neutral onto the coil there for it. Uh, you can run, you know, a tap off of your incoming black conductor, run it out through a switch, take it back down to your A1. You can get as you know, fancy as you want with this thing. But for the time being, I'll delete that little connector we threw in there. We've got our basic connections done. Easy. Once you have got your actual libraries built up, until you get libraries built up to spend a bit of time building components. But every time you build a good component, Remember, stick it back in the library, label it well, save it, and then you get to use it again next time. All right. Cheers.